Hello everyone. If you've ever used Power BI, then you know it's relatively simple to connect your reports to a Microsoft data source or to several other popular sources. However, many times your organization may use a service or a platform not listed in Power BI's Get Data section. In these cases, the usual answer may require developing a unique connector or a unique Power Automate flow calling the APIs for each data source. However, even this may not work as some APIs require an expensive annual developer's license or may not include all the data you can manually pull from the site's reports. This is why I've created a more standardized process for pulling data from just about any external source without using any APIs. So I have this Cloudflow set to run every morning. And what it does is it processes some desktop flow actions to download a CSV table of data from a site, changes the delimiter of that CSV data, then parses and batch uploads all the data to a SharePoint list that is connected to a Power BI report. And then all these remaining actions at the bottom just help notify it someone if the batch action or another part of the flow fails. Starting with the desktop flow action, I have input variables with the credentials that the UI flow will use to log into the site and the start and end dates to help set the time frame that the downloaded CSV file should cover. In this instance, I'm uploading the report every day, so I only need yesterday's data, and the two dates are both set to yesterday's date. Now, if we go to the actual desktop flow, you'll see all those corresponding input variables here. And you may also notice my desktop flow isn't very long. It's only about 20 lines. That's because I don't actually set it to navigate the entire site to pull the data. Instead, I find the button I would usually use to download the data, and I right click and select copy link address. This gives me a direct link to start downloading the data, and it works no matter where I am on the website. I just have to be logged in. So all this desktop flow is really going to do is launch the sign-in page, use the credentials to sign in, then send that download URL and run through the remaining steps to download the actual file and then pull that file data into a variable. And of course, keeping the steps to a minimum should save development time and make the flow more resilient to changes in the website. Looking back to the start of the desktop flow, the first thing you'll see is I'm reformatting the input date variables into the format th that the download link uses. This format may be different for the different sites you may work with, so you'll have to double check any link you pull and figure out what the correct format is and replace anything in your start dates or replace any other formatting uh, for your specific link. But see how in my URL link that I pulled, it has those date numbers in there, but instead of dashes or slashes, it has this percent to F in there. So that's why here I'm replacing the dashes that I have in the Power Automate uh, Cloudflow dates, and I'm replacing those dashes with percent to F. Just note that Power Automate does, or Power Automate Desktop does use percent signs to call variables. So you'll need to use this formatting where you put in two percent signs to properly escape the text. So once it's reformatted those, it's then launching the sign in URL for the sign in page for the site inputting the username and password credentials, and then hitting the sign in button. From there, the second that it signs in, it's going to send that direct uh, data download URL with the report start date and report end date 
uh, from those previous actions where the dates have been reformatted to fit the format of the link. After it sends that download link, then this piece is just dealing with a specific pop-up that might come up for my site, may not apply to you, but mainly it's waiting for the next window to pop up, that file explorer download window that you'll always see whenever you're downloading a file on Chrome. So it's waiting for the save button from that window to appear on the screen. Once that save button appears, then it's going to change the name of the file to this specific format so that I can easily reference that in a later action where it's reading from a specific file from the download folder. And also notice how right here I'm replacing the .csv with .txt. So that's going to save it as a text file. And that's not on accident. So there's a later step in the Cloudflow where you saw I'm changing the delimiter. And I'm doing that because when I'm parsing the data, I will have an issue if I have something like an address that has commas in it. Because each piece of data in a row is separated out by a comma in the CSV data. And if I have commas within my actual data, then I need some way to identify that. I found that just pulling this directly as a CSV file and CSV data, there's not much of a good way to tell which commas are purposeful or you know the natural commas in your data and which ones are the delimiters. But if I save it as a .txt, it seems to add double quotes around any piece of data that has commas in it. And that's what the, that later set of actions, changing the delimiter, is looking for so that it can change only the comma delimiters and not the commas that are within the double quotes uh, of the text data. So once it's downloaded that data into a text file on the computer, or on whatever machine you're running this on, it then finds that file in the download folder and reads that into this CSV output variable that will output in the desktop flow action on the cloud flow. After that, it's going to delete the file on the machine and close the web browser, which will help reset the machine for any follow on Power Automate desktop flow that has to run. And you may have also noticed the blue shields along the left hand side here. Those mean that these have certain actions for error handling. So anytime that these actions fail, they're set to run a subflow for me, which is just the regular two final actions for this desktop flow where it deletes the file and closes the web browser. That way, if something does fail, then I can just go and hit the resubmit button on the cloud flow and it will still be ready to rerun the flow regardless of if something failed. You know, there won't be a web browser already up that could get in the way of another instance of this flow running. So back to the cloud flow. We can see the CSV output variable in our action output here with all of our data. From there, I'm adding the output data to the scope of actions so that I can choose a new delimiter for the CSV data. If you wanna know more about this CSV delimiter change, uh, visit the link in the description. But all you need to know with these actions is it takes in the data that you've chosen and a new delimiter that you've chosen and outputs your data with that new delimiter. You'll also notice that it's preserving any of the commas that are normally in my data. So it replaced the comma delimiters here, but it left the commas that are normally in my addresses. Now that I have this delimited by pipes instead of commas, I can much more easily parse it in the later 
batch create actions down here for the SharePoint list. If you do want to know more about this batch create set of actions, then check the batch create link in the description. You don't have to use batch create if you're working with a small data set, but it is preferred, especially with larger data sets, as you will very quickly run out of your daily action limit in Power Automate on your account. Uh, if you're using, you know, one or two actions per row of data, and you just won't be able to automate the data collection for many reports if you're doing it one, one row by one row. But the main thing to know here is this generate SP data action. So if I go back to the edit mode, you'll see here. First, I'm using this expression to generate an array where each line from my CSV data is turned into a string in an array. That's from the split expression there, splitting on the line breaks in the CSV data. I'm also skipping the first line of headers, so it's just my actual data that I'm working with. Now each line of data can be called with the item expression and I can split each line of data by the new pipe delimiter within that line on the CSV. So, you know, I have each line from the CSV and then each line has the multiple columns of data for that line and each of those columns is separated by the pipe. So what I then do is I split on that new delimiter on the pipe to get an array of that line's values. From there, I'm using each column's column number to identify what piece of data I want from each line to match it up with the key on this side of the select action. So for example, the registration date is the third column in the file. So, you know, if I actually downloaded the Excel or CSV file and I looked at the table, this would be the third column in the table. And the reason that it's the number two on that split expression is the index starts at zero. So if I want the third column, I have to select the column at position two in the index. I'm also using some extra expressions here to do things like convert each date time to UTC as that's the time zone that SharePoint stores every date. And then SharePoint will convert that UTC time to your site's set time zone. I'm also using some expressions to correctly set the binary true false columns and to set the number columns. Of course, if you aren't as comfortable transforming all these data types in Power Automate, then you could always make all your SharePoint columns text columns and then do all these transformations and calculations in Power BI instead. You can see in the output here, all that CSV data has now been transformed into JSON which can then be converted into a form that the batch action can use to post all the data to the SharePoint list. And this batch action can create up to 500 SharePoint records in just a few actions or a few steps. So again, if you're interested in this batch create set of actions, just see the extra link in the description. Looking to our SharePoint list, you can see all the data was successfully loaded into the list. Just note here that I've created any of my columns without spaces or other special characters. If you did create a column in an existing list that does have special characters, then you'll need to go to the settings page and go to that specific columns page and then look into the URL here, go to the end of the URL, 
and grab the column name here. Then you can go over to your flow and paste it in as the correct key value. If you don't post the correct key values here, then the batch action will fail. So this part is important. Now I can go to Power BI and I can use the get data action going to more. I'll type in SharePoint and make sure that you select SharePoint online list. Don't select the regular SharePoint list option because the online list option has some additional features that allow us to load the data faster. This will really help as you're first developing your report and you need to refresh it or it needs to load data. It won't take as long if you're using this. So if I select that, then here are the extra features I was talking about where I want to select the 2.0 option and I want to select the default view. So only retrieve the columns in the default view not all those extra SharePoint columns that they add in that you probably don't need. Once I've set all that up, then I can just go here to my SharePoint list and make sure that I grab both the domain URL and the specific site that I'm on. Post that in here. Then I just need to find the list that I'm Working on here, all columns, and I will load that. And once Power BI has finished connecting to the SharePoint list, you can then create all your great visualizations for your report. However, I'm just going to use this simple bar chart for an example overview of how everything works. So every day, this Power Automate cloud flow will run at 6 a.m. And it will immediately trigger that Power Automate desktop flow. So Power Automate Desktop logs in and pulls and saves all the data from the site. The Cloudflow then reformats and sends all the data over to the SharePoint list. You can see the new data in the list here. And all that new data is available in your report upon a manual or a scheduled automatic refresh. And that's how to automate updates for any report with non-standard external data sources. If you're interested in setting this up for your own reports, I provide a link to the Cloudflow and links to related content in the description. Feel free to share this with any Power Platform enthusiasts who may find this useful, and thank you for watching.